Hello, and welcome to another day of the Internet Measurement Village. Joining us today, we're really delighted to have Lai Olson from the Measurement Lab. Uh, and she'll be telling us all about measuring internet performance. Thanks for joining us, Lai. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, this is great. Um, yeah, my name is Lai Olson. I am the project director of Measurement Lab. Um, and I'm hoping today just to talk a bit about what Measurement Lab is and how it can be thought of as a resource for the internet freedom community. Um, I guess to start a bit about myself, previously I worked with Equality, um, who works on the Deflect project as well as the Sino project. And um, I think that was my that was my introduction to the internet freedom world and thinking about um, how tools can shape human rights and um, uh, freedom of speech online. Um, and so that this world is uh, kind of where I'm coming from and, and uh, choosing to approach uh, the idea of measuring the internet as a way to um, way towards helping those who are trying to promote those um, principles online. Um, moving into the agenda for today, like I said, just trying to think about how uh, MLAM can be thought about as a resource to the internet freedom community, but to do that, I think it helps to have an understanding of what MLAB is um, and what it is we're trying to do. Um, so today we'll talk about what is MLAB, um, how do we measure the internet, there's obviously many ways, um, how you can use our data and how we uh, support community-based research, and then more specifically, how we can um, support internet freedom community research. Um, so starting with this basic question, um, what is MLAB? Um, first, we can talk about our mission, which is to measure the internet, save the data, and make it universally accessible and useful. Um, the first one of this of these uh, um, mission statements is to measure the internet, which obviously just by, um, by, as the measurement village is proving, uh, there are several ways to do this. Um, and by no means does measurement lab claim to do all of them, but all of them are, uh, are all of the ways in which we do choose to measure the internet are towards this, this goal of making it universally accessible and useful. So um, we'll talk more about this, but all of our code is open source. Um, everything, all the data that we save is publicly archived and freely accessible. Um, in BigQuery. And so uh, the way in which we choose to measure the internet is always again, towards this idea of making it universally accessible and useful. Um, I think also when thinking about how MLAB measures the internet, it's useful to think about the problem that the project was trying to solve um, and its creation at the time of its creation, um, because I think that helps understand uh, why uh, we do measure the internet the way that we do. Um, so our sort of origin story um, at this point of myth uh, is uh, um, back in 2008, um, a bunch of uh, a group of internet researchers led by Vint Cerf started having conversations around what uh, was missing from the landscape of internet research um, in you know uh, software development and project management terms. What was the blocker to um, being able to do the experiments they wanted to do. And a thing that was largely uh, reported was that there were not, um, there was a lack of uh, widely deployed servers with enough connectivity uh, to the rest of the internet to be able to um, host the kind of experiments that they wanted to host. And so um, this was obviously not uh, an overnight problem, but that is, uh, one of the um, sort of missing pieces in internet research that Measurement Lab is trying to provide because um, such servers are difficult to find um, uh, as a out, kind of outside of the academic context, context and outside of the commercial context. 
um, but still providing a way to uh, have them maintained in the way that they would be commercially while being used the way they would um, academically. So um, this is where MLab um, tries to be a resource by providing um, a worldwide infrastructure of uh, servers that are maintained and connected to the rest of the internet in such a way that is useful to experiments that want to um, be hosted uh, as any other content on the internet would be. Um, uh, another part that uh, researchers reported as being missing at the time was the ability, like even if we had this large global infrastructure, um, how would, uh, at the time there was no way for um, the massive amounts of data that these tests would produce to be easily shared with other researchers. And so um, this was also the, the kind of problem that Measurement Lab set out to solve. Um, and that leads into um, how today we're able to say that all of our um, data is free and publicly accessible um, by researchers, by policymakers, by internet users, anyone who um, wants to see the measurements that we are getting are able to, to not only um, look at them, but also share them um, with others so that we can all be kind of looking at the same the same thing um, when we talk about when we talk about internet measurements. So um, these are the two uh, some of the, the two main problems that Measurement Lab was trying to solve, and um, this presentation will kind of talk about how we've gone about solving them and continue to. It's it's by no means done. Um, so fast forward twelve years from this, we have um, a platform, a pipeline. Um, the data itself, and then the tools community and team that are all resources to help make sure that the platform and pipeline and the data are being um, are, are usable and accessible. Um, this is in effect to MLab. Um, so I'll start by talking about the team. Um, our core team, the project itself is a fiscally sponsored project of Code for Science and Society. Um, uh, Code for Science does a lot of great work with other open data and open infrastructure projects in the science community um, and with a focus on openness and um, transparency. Uh, the um, staff uh, that works uh, at the team with the team there is myself um, and our program management and our platform um, engineers. And then we also have had a number of contributors over the year um, of over the years and uh, um, currently Google as a core contributor is able to donate um, a small team of software engineers uh, time to uh, to write open source code for the project and so the team is also composed of um, some folks at Google who are writing open source code for our platform and pipeline um, the Oh, let me go back. Um, over the years, as I said, we worked with um, a number of organizations, and um, previously we were at uh, Open Technology Fund at New America as well. And so we've had team members from there um, in the past. Um, going into again, this like fast forwarding twelve years from the problems that we were trying to solve. How do we? How do? What does that mean for how we measure the internet? So. Um, if you'll remember that first uh, kind of problem that was outlined um, at the at the beginning of this uh, lack of widely deployed servers with ample connectivity, um, fast forward 12 years, we have now 500 um, plus servers in 60 plus metro areas. Um, this was a screenshot the morning um, of, I took this morning um, that uh, represents where our infrastructure is. Um, globally, uh, all of these servers are placed in what we call off-net servers, meaning um, in tier one data centers where content is hosted and that are outside of access providers. So um, the idea here is to measure the full path between um, user and content. Um, so when any um, person runs a test, uh, they're running it from their device and it's testing against one of our servers in one of these off-net data centers. And their connecting to um, the, uh, uh, their connection is um, starting within their access network, but our tests are placed outside of the access network where content is hosted. And so again, the idea is uh, measuring the full path from user 
to content. Um, and that's what we mean by off net. So we are in data centers where ISPs peer with one another, um, which is uh, outside of where um, the, the users connect with um, their network. That network then goes and connects with other networks, and that's where that's where MLab servers are hosted. Um, the concept here is that off-net measurements measure the inter part of the internet. They measure the part where networks connect with one another, and therefore the part that um, users are affected by but don't necessarily have access to. Um, and so that's why we place all of our servers and off-net providers um, in commercially maintained data centers. Um, the, on those servers, we host what we call measurement services, which are um, proposed by tool builders. These are um, sometimes ac academics, sometimes members of um, the internet freedom community, network engineers, et cetera. Um, they're approved by a review committee. Um, and these uh, are experiments. They're experiments that have been scaled to work on a global, on a global scale. Um, and they're, they're how we measure the internet. Um, we host on those servers the server side part of the code, but um, the client side is a, a community developed effort. So anybody can develop a test client. Um, and these test clients are what, again, a user, an internet user would um, run one of these tests and that test client would test against um, one of uh, against a server, um, a server that we maintain. And um, it's important to us that anybody can develop a test client. This is um, also part of uh, being an open source project or an open project. We want anyone to be able to um, utilize the, the platform by uh, writing a test client that can then um, utilize our entire off-net platform. Um, when the tests are run, then uh, that data is publicly archived and then parsed into BigQuery. Um, so this is what uh, getting towards that second problem that we were trying to solve, um, where researchers were having um, running into the problem of not being able to share these large um, data sets that the measurements were producing. Um, the way that we solve this problem is by publicly archiving that. Um, the results of these tests so that um, it can kind of, you know, the raw data can be um, seen, the raw numbers uh, can be, are put in the open, um, and then they're parsed into BigQuery to make it uh, accessible in a way um, that you can use SQL BigQuery to, to look through what the data is, um, that what data is coming from these tests. Um, so some examples of test clients uh, that get um, that generate the data that's parsed into BigQuery. Um, if you Google how fast is my internet, you get an integration of the NDT test. Um, Uni uh, uses um, or has integrated Dash and um, NDT, which are two toast tests that we uh, host um, uh, into their application. And so um, these are just examples. There are several others. And actually, by nature of it being um, open we had, we don't know all the test clients that exist but um, what we can say is that it's produced a massive amount of data all of these test clients have over the years um, which we'll talk a bit about more later um, so this gets into what we mean by mlab data so as i said when a, a user runs a test from a test client um, the the data is then publicly archived and parsed into bigquery and this is this in entirety is what we mean by mlab data um, MLAB data, though, is largely composed of or comprised of, uh, of, of NDT data. Um, as I said, it's integrated into Google search, so that generates a lot of tests. Um, and so NDT, uh, Network Diagnostic Tool, which we'll talk more about now, is our, our most frequently um, used test. And so it's, it's because of that, our data set is largely um, made up of NDT. And so um, MLab data is often um, used sort of synonymously with NDT data. They're actually separate. NDT or MLab data could refer to any one of the measurement experiments that we host. Um, but by nature of NDT making up a majority of that, um, the two are often conflated. So just to say, it's it's sometimes useful to 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 ask when people say MLab data if they're talking specifically about NDT data. Um, but because it is the most um, popular and it, because of that um, 
uh, common association, I will spend some time talking about what NDT itself measures because it does largely characterize um, how we currently measure the internet. Um, so digging into NDT itself, um, NDT, Network Diagnostic Tool, was um, originally developed by the Internet2 team, um, and now MLab uh, maintains and develops it. Um, the uh, technical definition of what it measures is that it measures the single stream performance of bulk transport capacity. Um, you may or may not be a person who knows what that means, but if not, no worries, we'll talk through it. Um, bulk transport capacity is referring to the rate that a link can reliable can re deliver data using TCP. TCP is um, at the transportation layer of the internet um, and is in charge of getting packets across reliably, um, making sure that everything ordered or, or, uh, is received in the order that it was meant to be and that nothing is missing. Um, so the reliability of that link. Bulk transport capacity is referring to the rate that it can do so. Um, and so when we talk about measuring bulk transport capacity, we're, we're really talking about measuring the reliability of that link. Um, it can also be said that we're measuring the how well TCP is able to do its job. Um, link capacity, on the other hand, is another measurement um, that's referring to the maximum bit rate of that link. Um, what gets confusing is that both of these terms are uh, conflated with internet speed. There's actually no good definition around what internet we mean by internet speed. And so just to say bulk transport capacity is a measurement, is, is a type of measurement of speed. So is link capacity and, and both are referred to as a speed test. However, they're measuring entirely different things and there's no um, necessarily uh, benefit over one or the other. It's not to say one is um, a, a, because we measure bulk transport that it's better. It's just a different, um, there's no right or wrong way to measure. So that's just a different measurement. Um, but it can be useful when thinking about um, MLAB data, which could uh, more specifically mean NDT data um, to think, um, to further define that it is a measurement of speed depending on which measurements or sorry, which definition of speed you're referring to. Um, and so that is one part of the definition. It measures bulk transport capacity, um, which can be confused with link capacity. Uh, and then it measures the single stream performance. So this gets into um, how, again, TCP works and how um, uh, when you, in a modern browser, you open up, you go to a web page, and it's actually going to open up multiple streams. We measure one of those streams, so a single stream of uh, bulk transport capacity. Um, by we, I mean NDT does. Um, so when you measure multi-stream, it's uh, it's possible that it gets closer to link capacity, which is again the um, the uh, maximum bit rate for that link. But what happens there is that it can it can not represent packet loss as well. So again, if you think about how TCP's job is to make sure that that everything gets there in the right place, if you're opening up multiple TCP streams, um, it's likely that the number that you're getting will not um, uh, represent the uh, reliability of that stream so well. So we use single stream as a way to provide an effective baseline for how well um, the the TCP is able to get packets across that link. Um, it is uh, an effective baseline then for measuring um, the user's internet performance. Um, so this is again um, not a. It's you know there's no right or wrong way per se to to measure the internet, but this is the way that NDT does. Um, and when it's hosted on MLab specifically. Um, NDT measures the single stream performance of bulk transport capacity. And when it's put on an, the MLab platform, it's put in our off net servers. And so it measures then not only um, an NDT test from a, a user's device to um, a server in, uh, in uh, their access network, but actually outside of it. And so NDT on the MLab platform then provides a full measurement of um, a user's experience of the internet from 
their own uh, device all the way through their access providers network and all the way into a, uh, a data center where ISPs peer with one another using a test that's designed to provide an effective baseline um, for um, the, the reliability, the, the performance of that connection. Um, so this is uh, all kind of information that's um, useful to have in mind or is, is, is what you have to um, be able to, to know. Um, uh, this is all the pre prerequisite knowledge for being able to answer the question, why is my MLAB test result different than um, X um, other speed test or performance test? Um, and it just really gets into um, what it is that we're measuring um, and the differences between those uh, definitions. So um, off net versus on net um, is again, getting at this, is it, is the server that you're testing against within the access provider or is it outside? Um, and then uh, bulk transfer work capacity is talking about the measuring the reliability, uh, the ability to send bits, um, how well, how well uh, the rate at which you're able to send packets reliably. And then single stream is talking about that um, effective baseline for how many streams um, or how well a single stream, even if you're opening up multiple is able to do. Um, and so there's a blog post that is linked there that's really useful for talking about um, what we mean by how fast is my internet, speed tests, and accuracy, and how NDT and MLAB um, relate to all of those. But um, these four terms are, are first are useful in thinking about if your MLAB test is different, um, first, are you talking about an NDT test? And then thinking through um, is off net bulk transport and single stream definitions. Um, so that is um, all again about NDT specifically, and that's um, due to the fact that we have so, I wanted to spend time on that because we have so much NDT data, um, but it's also when thinking about what is MLAB and what is MLAB data, useful to remember that we host other measurement services, um, and one of those is Dash, which Uni, as I mentioned before, has a, um, a, a developed a test client for, we also measure, or we also host a measurement called WeHe, which is um, uh, measuring differential treatment of applications by ISPs. Dash is measuring uh, the quality of um, video streaming, um, and uh, both are um, hosted on our platform currently, and you can create, uh, you can um, uh, write test clients um, for them today, as well as use the ones that others have already written. Um, and so when thinking about MLAB data, um, you can also uh, think about the, the other measurement services that we host as well. Um, another part to call out too is that um, for every measurement that's run um, from a test client, there's uh, what are called sidecar services that are also um, run as well. And one of those is um, the traceroute core service, which collects information from our server back to the client that initiated the connection, so the, the client that um, ran the test. And um, that means that for every single NDT test, for every single DASH test, and for every single WEHE test, and any other feature measurement service that we host, a trace route test is run. And so that's a massive amount of trace route data um, that can be used to uh, use to an analysis as well. Um, and all of these also um, collect packet headers um, which give really valuable low-level TCP metrics that are, are useful um, in, in di diagnosing and understanding um, the networks as well. So uh, just to say, not only does MLAB data have a massive amount of NDT data and the data produced by Wehe and um, uh, Dash as well, but for every single one of these tests, um, there's a sidecar service that's being run as well um, with a, a slew of metrics. Um, then there's uh, the question, there's all this data, that's what our data is, but what what makes that valuable? So um, one thing that it's uh, important to think about, and also um, I'm sure this is uh, something that the other measurement projects think about as well, but um, the, the value of an individual test uh, is limited. It's just, it's only going to tell you about the connection um, 
of a, or uh, about the connection in that moment in time. And so when it really becomes, um, when you're trying to answer this question, um, how well is internet doing in X area, it's actually really important to think about um, the individual tests compared to um, other tests, other individual tests over time. So to say the aggregate data and NDT specifically um, is, it, it's an, this is true for NDT specifically because it's measuring the connection um, and, it'll, and that can be uh, affected by multiple factors. And so if you really, um, want to think about what is significant about an individual test, you actually need to be able to compare it to um, the other tests that were taken with similar factors influencing it. Um, and so just to say, this is saying that aggregate test data is the most useful uh, aspect of the MLAB data sets, being able to look across um, time and space to see what are the patterns that are emerging and what are the general trends that NDT data is suggesting that internet users are seeing on a larger scale. Um, and so this is always going to be the benefit of using MLAB data is that it's um, one, large. Uh, we have something like 3 million new NDT measurements specifically per day. Um, and as of uh, 2020, we have close to, this is 2 billion, um, but recently it's moved to 3 billion, close to 3 billion rows of NDT table or of NDT data um, in the NDT table alone. Um, so there's really, there's just a lot of data that you can look at. And um, when we're saying that it's useful to look at aggregate data, we have a lot of it. And so you can really start to see these patterns and trends emerging from it. Um, that is what um, we think makes our data useful. Um, the other part to this is that all of it, as I've mentioned before, is open. So all the way from when a test is generated or when a test is run and data is generated, publicly archived, and then put into our public data set. But furthermore, all of our tests are themselves are required to be um, open source. And by testing I mean measurement services, that is the code that runs on our servers is open source. So if you're looking at this data ever and you're wondering how we got these numbers, you're able to see it. It's, um, it's not a black box, you're able to go in to the code. Anyone who can read code can go in and say, this is how they got that number. Um, all of our reference clients are open source, so meaning clients that um, we provide to our community to um, build, uh, to reference when they're building their own client, um, open source as well. So you can also see um, how uh, the client side is, um, is built as well. And then um, again, everything between um, uh, that test and then when it lands in BigQuery is open and free to access to the public. So this large data set, it's, it's not that you can only see, you know, parts of it as certain segments in time, um, you can you can see all of it. And um, that's useful when trying to, uh, again, think about individual tests versus aggregate data. Um, if you are trying to um, see these patterns and trends, it's useful to be able to see all of the data and you can because it's open and free to the public. Um, another uh, thing that makes our data valuable is that it's all user contributed. Um, and it's also um, coming from several different locations across uh, the world. And in that way um, is representative of um, a really massive amount of the internet. Uh, um, NDT tests are run globally um, and two thirds are actually run from outside of the US and um, all of uh, the measurements that we, or all of the measurement services that we host benefit from our off net platform methodology. So being hosted outside of access networks. Um, and so no matter what test is being run, be it NDT Dash or Wehi or any other measurement service that will host, all of them benefit from being representative of the user's experience from going from uh, user to content um, that our OffNet platform provides. And then furthermore, another uh, thing that makes our data valuable is that it respects user privacy. We do um, collect the IP address, but that is the only um, piece of personal data that's collected by our tests um, and no other information is um, uh, collected about you and if um, and if you do choose to want to, if you take the test and you want to remove our um, uh, your IP address from our data set, we have a process outlined in our in our privacy policy. I will say that this is um, you know I understand that the privacy uh, aspect of measurement is incredibly important um, to the 
to the internet freedom community and to myself as well. So if there's feedback or if there's um, maybe any discussion to be had about how other folks are handling this, we'd, we'd love to, to hear about that. Um, I think I also didn't mention too that all of our tests are active, meaning that users opt into them. So um, it's uh, never the case that a test is um, running without the user's permission. Uh, what does happen though is you can, um, some users uh, would opt to have random or recurring measurements uh, being run. And we'll talk about that, about that a bit more later, but um, uh, at, even with those cases though, a user would opt into them at, at some time in the beginning. Um, so that is how you can think about our data being valuable um, and also uh, accessible, um, but uh, here's uh, more granular information or more logistical information about how to actually access it. Um, I won't go through these um, all in depth, but uh, to provide the resource to go on our website and look at um, uh, the different ways you can access the data. This first one is actually under development currently. It's our visualization site and is typically the best way to um, just get a, a sense of what's there. Um, currently, we have um, in place of the visualization site these data studio dashboards that are um, using BigQuery and are producing um, tables that you can then export data from. Um, this was originally uh, imagined to be and is a resource during COVID-19 and understanding the changes over time um, to, to internet performance as represented by NDT um, and is available um, today. And then through the next uh, like month or so, we'll be um, upgrading our visualization site to, to have parity, but also um, provide more um, high level visualizations of, of NDT data at large. Um, then there's also uh, BigQuery itself, which is probably the most um, uh, sort of both in-depth and easy way to access our data. Um, the raw data is available, but I, uh, few people would want to dig into that uh, directly. And BigQuery allows a, uh, for um, users to go in with um, data science or database expertise um, to uh, explore our data. Um, we will say that it's 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 flexible, but there's an onboarding element here, and um, that's what the our staff is uh, here for is to answer questions on how to access the data. Um, we don't want you to have to do it alone. So if you go onto um, our site and get access to the data, and then immediately find that you don't know what to do next, um, we're always here to answer questions. Um, and there are a number of third-party tools that also integrate with BigQuery. So if you're familiar with Tableau or RStudio, um, there's also APIs for um, other popular programming languages like Python. Um, those are also an option to, to access our data as well. Um, let's see, we talked about the uh, Data Studio dashboards. Um, that is just a quick overview of how to access our data um, and we're here for any more questions. Um, typically it's useful just to introduce them and then um, kind of help with a specific research use case. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, how do we support community research? I'm actually checking time. So, okay, I think I can go through these. Um, Quickly, the uh, community research is important to MLab because it's, um, you know, the value of our data is that it's user contributed, but um, it can be useful to provide uh, ways for communities to uh, make sure that their users are contributing. Uh, communities um, or users within a certain community are contributing to our data set to make sure that they are represented <laughs> in the larger picture. So um, we are uh, we have a couple different tools that we've made we've developed and maintained over the years that are specifically in um, support of this. So. Piecewise um, is uh, one of these tools and it's um, a speed test and survey portal. So it's um, helping you run an NDT. It has an NDT integration that allows the user to run a, uh, an NDT test um, and at the same time, fill out a survey um, that can be um, useful for any community or organization that's looking to get um, qual quantitative um, internet performance data as well as qualitative information, maybe around um, say pricing or demographics, um, anything that would be useful to contextualize uh, the NDT test data that um, they're getting. And so 
this is a, a great option for um, communities where they're uh, um, maybe don't already have a survey platform that they're using and just want to, to get um, something that has a survey and a test out um, into their into their communities. And it's a, it's a really useful way to get public engagement um, through this portal and to raise a, uh, awareness and discussion around um, internet uh, testing in, in an area and give um, users a, a place to go to, to, to run a test and get more information. Um, Piecewise specifically uh, is able to um, enable more enhanced um, geolocation collecting um, past what uh, um, MLab collects. So whenever um, someone runs a test through um, piecewise, their default level uh, data is going to go into the MLab public data set, that is the IP address level, but piecewise then um, also collects um, HTML5, which is not stored in MLab's, MLab's uh, uh, public um, data, but is stored on a private database um, of whoever's is hosting um, piecewise. So this is a good way to get more granular location data. Obviously, with all of the um, privacy, the correct poly privacy policies in place, um, letting users know who is saving that private data, but um, is an option for those who um, look at MLab's data set and want more granular information. Um, we also have a, a Chrome extension that is currently in development, but is almost done. Um, uh, it's uh, existing today, but it's being upgraded. Um, and this allows uh, users to run a, an NDT test um, regularly or on a, schedule, on a schedule from their browser. So um, it's just a normal Chrome extension that you then set up the schedule for when you want to run tests. Um, and you're able to then save, not only um, export the data um, to a CSV from the extension itself, but also to a remote database. Um, this is, as I said, in development and um, is useful for folks that are just trying to get um, uh, more longitudinal data for their specific connections. Um, they, if they don't want to have to go in every single day and, um, and, and uh, run a speed test manually. Um, this is a great option. Um, the uh, last one I'll talk about is actually, I think, um, interesting for the internet freedom community specifically. Um, this is a tool called Murakami, uh, which is uh, named after the, the author Haruki Murakami, who wrote what we talk about when we talk about running. Um, this is what we talk about when we talk about running tests. Um, so this uh, is similar to the Chrome extension in enabling um, automatic recurring measurements, but this time um, not from the browser, but from an on-premise device or really anything that can run a Docker container. So it's a container-based service that enables automatic recurring measurements. Um, it's most recently been developed in partnership with um, Simmons University with support from IMLS, which is the Institute for Museum Libraries and Services, for those of you not familiar. Um, the, um, we're now able to run Murakami on um, on-premise measurement devices, which means that we can run automatic recurring tests um, from these devices through uh, throughout the day. I think it's four tests per day. Um, uh, currently, we're using Odroid XC4s, but as I said, it can run from anything that runs Docker. Um, currently, we're using Belina Cloud to manage a fleet of devices. Um, and I bring this up because it's a, a useful way to get um, a, a better sense of a location's uh, connectivity by just running continuous tests and building up the number of tests you have from a specific location over time um, with a pretty low lift. There's obviously the setup of the devices, but from there, then they just they do their job. Um, and I think this is um, interesting for the internet freedom world and trying to get um, a better sense of locations that are not being measured and maybe don't have, um, are not going to a public, for uh, places in which the public engagement aspect is useful, but not going to get all the tests that we need, where we really need to um, uh, kind of put automation behind getting getting more tests. Um, and so this could be something useful for the internet freedom community specifically. Um, and so that's a good segue into talking about what other ways that we can be useful um, to the internet freedom community. Um, there's uh, first, the first and foremost way is that, you know, the, the platform itself is a resource. So, um, you know, we're hosting three measurement services right now, but we'd like to host more. Um, and this is what 
I think would be a really interesting point of collaboration between um, um, us and the IF world of like, what, what are the um, things that we should be measuring? What, what is a useful test to be deployed globally that can give us a sense of um, the things that the IF community needs to know to do the work that, um, that we're doing. So I think um, internet freedom advocates have a unique perspective on what it means to have a healthy internet. And um, I think this then can be translated into what it means that we measure and what it means that um, it is important to measure if we want uh, an, a, an internet that has um, the, the principles that we support. And so I think, um, an interesting point of collaboration is thinking about how MLab as a platform can be used as a resource um, via hosting of measurement services. Um, there's also the opportunity for um, IF community to develop test clients um, to, to drive the, the production of um, data for each one of these measurement experiments. So you can write one for NTT Dash or Wehi and any of the future measurement services that we might host. Um, and then overall, there's also just the, the low sort of low hanging fruit of um, collaboration or just uh, of making use of MLab by using your data and ingesting it into maybe your dashboard. Recently, Siphon did this um, and integrated their integrated NDT, NDT data alongside Uni data. Um, and uh, so even beyond um, or even lower lift than that is just taking a look at what kind of data we have um, in the location um, in a region of interest for you. Um, and then uh, then also there's the option to integrate it into a dashboard if it continues to be useful. Um, for entity specifically, another uh, point of collaboration or a uh, way in which we could be useful is the uh, server that we host uh, to run for clients to run tests against for NDT, NDT is um, open source and able to be run through um, any machine that can run Docker. So you could you could run your own NDT server, and um, this is saying just to say you can. The way in which we do it is we use our offnet platform, so we measure all the way out to. Um, an off-net server, but you, that server uh, could also be within your own network. And so this is a way to test the performance of a segment of the network versus the entire um, uh, pathway that we measure. You could measure a portion of that um, by hosting NDT server any any point along the way. Um, so here's some information on how to do that, but we're also happy to help you um, via support. Um, and that's another way. And then I think um, I'll end by just uh, noting some potential areas of research, um, specifically between other um, measurement projects, but also the IF community at large. Um, I think uh, an open question that we've started thinking about um, with members of the community, but can can really think through more, like what, uh, how can each of these data sets complement one another? What what is uh, the NDT? Um, data uh, providing that other measurements don't and vice versa. What is Ripe Atlas, for example, um, telling us uh, about um, the connectivity of a user that um, MLab data is not and putting these two together and all of the other projects that are um, being represented in the measurement village, how can they complement one another? I think is a question we're starting to answer but can, can, can certainly continue to. Um, Another potential area of research is our trace route data is largely unexplored. Um, what can it tell us about how the internet um, works uh, as a global project, I think is an interesting question for the internet freedom community specifically. How, what can it tell us about hops across borders? Um, and just furthermore, what are the ways in which the data sets that we have available can provide meaningful metrics to the internet freedom community and specifically the communities that um, work we're working with uh, that are at risk and what are the, the metrics and the ways in which measurements um, that we provide and others provide can be useful to um, helping uh, monitor and predict the events that um, we care about. So for example, internet interference, um, what is what is uh, what defines an, um, an event of internet interference and how can we use that definition to prepare for it? and to uh, be able to um, learn from it and um, monitor it as it's happening. Um, 
that is a particularly interesting example for me because I think what makes these measurements useful is being able to um, get a sense of what uh, that how to how to um, see these things happening in the world in real time and then um, maybe even um, prepare for them. So those are some areas of research that I think are interesting and are open questions at this point that we'd love to hear feedback on and, and collaborate with you all on, um, all as a way to think about MLAB as a resource for the internet freedom community. Um, and I'll end it there. Um, again, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out um, to myself directly or to a support at measurementlab.net. Um, uh, a lot of these things are, are uh, just you, more easy to approach when you have someone to, to work through it with, and that's what we're here for. So um, with that, I'll conclude and I'll take questions. Thank you Thank so you. much, Lai, for that really interesting presentation. Um, I'm going to remind everybody that you can uh, leave questions as usual in the pad or in the Uni Slack channel uh, or you know directly here in the in the YouTube live chat. Uh, we've received uh, several questions uh, from uh, people uh, watching this uh, uh, the stream, uh, and uh, I'll start from the first one. Uh, it comes from Simone, uh, and uh, he's asking. Uh, what are the main obstacles preventing MLab from deploying more servers close to users in the global south? As part of censorship throttling research, it is often useful to look at the typical characteristics of end-to-end -end channels, uh, for example, bandwidth, RTT, etc. Towards servers off-country, vis-a-vis uh, -vis servers that are inside the country. Uh, hashtag asking for a friend. <laughs> um, this is great. I I didn't actually mentioned um, they're in the slides, but I don't think I called it out specifically. Simone um, is on the UNI team, but has contributed time to MLab. So I think he's asking for um, maybe a friend that's him. I'm not sure. But in any case, um, hi, Simone. Um, uh, there are no specific barriers, actually. Um, but I would say that we're welcome. Uh, we would welcome pod sponsorships for any IXs that um, are in the region um, and also um, sponsorships in the form of inf uh, infrastructure donations of servers. Um, specifically, um, there, yeah, no specific barriers, but um, we uh, just would want to, it just needs to be prioritized. Right. Well, thank, thanks for that. Uh, so we have another question uh, that comes from uh, David F. Um, and he asks, do different versions of TCP, uh, for example, Reno versus Cubic, matter for the single stream NDT test? Do NDT clients typically use the operating systems uh, TCP, uh, TCP stack, I guess? Yeah, this is a great question um, and certainly can be um, dug into more. But I think the short answer is that they do. Um, it does matter what congestion algorithm we're using. Um, it's important or it's, it's, it's good to note here that um, NDT5 um, uses, uh, uh, there's a change from, you know, Cubic to, to uh, Reno and the, um, uh, NDT7 will use BBR. Um, and then to the second question, um, we do, yeah, we do use the operating systems um, version of TCP. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, so we have another question coming from Simone. Uh, he asks, are there specific limits on the number of tests Murakami can run per day? Uh, yes, um, it can run. It, it's hard coded to run four per day, um, but at random uh, times during the day. Okay, nice. Um, so we have another question coming from Simone. Uh, he says, uh, uh, "Would it be possible to add censorship measurements to Murakami, for example, Unitas?" Yeah, and I, I should actually note too that Murakami currently runs. Um, uh, NDT5, NDT7, um, and also the community-based, um, community-developed um, command line client from um, ukla-speedtest.net. So uh, it's uh, able to run any measurement, um, and it would include the censorship measurements as well. Um, and that, I think, uh, is also an interesting point of um, potential collaboration for the IF community is thinking about what tests would it be useful to run on an automatic recurring basis? Nice. That's that's really cool. I'm I'm quite excited about Murakami. Yeah. 
Um, so we have another question uh, that's coming from uh, Leonid. Um, and, and, uh, um, and he says, I'm working with a university lab named Censored Planet. We've loved to use NDT7 for our research, and we've already prototyped integration with NDT7 endpoints using the open API. That's an awesome service. What's the correct procedure to integrate measurement lab services in our research app running experiments? Should we register to use existing services to be a good network citizen, or should we treat existing, the existing open API as open for all? Where should we start if we want to extend some of the measurement services running on the off-net platform? Staying within the platform limitations, of course. Yeah, I um, appreciate this question, uh, as it's uh, meaning that you're wanting to be yeah, a good, a good uh, network citizen. Um, our developer guide on our website is the best place to go for this information. Um, just in that it's, it's more specific than I'll be probably right now. But um, I'll say that um, for NDT5, um, you are limited to um, 40 tests per day, um, just by a rate limiter. Um, for NDT7, we'll start to uh, provide the use of our locate service as um, the way to um, uh, make sure that you're being a, a good citizen by, um, it'll then um, have a, a way in which it's prioritizing um, tests that uh, use the API and in that way is then able to um, not overburden, you know, a, a one server. Um, but if you look at uh, our developer guide, that's the best place to start to making sure you're, you're doing the things you should. Great. And we can, we'll maybe add a link to, to that in the, in the video description. So you can, uh, uh, you can very well follow up on that there. Yeah, sounds good. Nice. Uh, so we have another question that comes from uh, KMC. Um, and the question is, are there countries that you observe variance in speed test results between port 443 and port 80 from the same vantage points, as in above normal variance between tests, due to different applications of filtering slash throttling? Any, are any other ports uh, beyond 80 and 443 being tested? Um, so yeah, this is just a good, this is just a good question. <laughs> uh, I don't actually have an answer to, uh, so, um, I don't believe any other ports are tested. Um, but to the first one, the larger question, uh, this is something that we want to look into and haven't. Um, so this is yeah, yet another area of potential collaboration. Um, you know, there's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, interesting because we, uh, most of our work goes into, um, producing the data. Um, or has in the past, at least in terms of supporting the platform, the pipeline, but the analysis of it is really a community-based effort um, and something that we'd love to do more of, but um, really lean on the community. So just to say, this is a really interesting research question and we'd love for someone to look at it uh, and we'd love to support whoever, whoever can. Nice. Well, sounds like a, a really great uh, research project for somebody to, uh, to pick up. <laughs> yeah. So we have another question uh, that comes from uh, Vinicius Fortuna. Uh, and the question is, uh, can we use the NDT data to detect internet shutdowns per region and ISP? Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is another great research question. Um, I mean, it's kind of um, important to think about the context of, you know, so like in a complete shutdown context, users couldn't run tests. Um, so I think it would kind of depend on how many tests we generally expect to see from um, a specific region that's experiencing um, a shutdown, um, just as a way to um, be able to make any um, assumptions about whether or not that's what's happening. Um, we would need normal, like a baseline of normal activity um, in that region. Um, but yeah, so we could see potentially a drop off in tests um, uh, during a shutdown and, and you know, after the fact, um, during the actual shutdown, we wouldn't be much of a help in that there, you know, no one would be running tests, so we wouldn't be able to see um, any connectivity information. Um, but that said, uh, we could, tools like Murakami also could be really useful in providing a baseline. So if we have, if we know we have um, a bunch of Murakami uh, beacons or, you know, devices running in a specific area, and then suddenly they're not running tests um, and it's all of them. It's not, you know, random occurrences um, due to device specific 
um, problems, then that would suggest that there's a larger um, a network uh, activity happening that um, we could use uh, we could use um, Murakami to become aware of. Um, but I'm also interested in um, this question of um, interference specifically because if it's if a shutdown, you know, we can't it just it goes away. But within throttling, um, you, you could potentially see activity within the NTT data um, about what uh, the behaviors are um, when it's specifically throttling versus just, you know, a problem on the network. Um, and that's an open question that we're, we're really keen to, to start looking at. Um, and then uh, it's useful also to call out that Colin Anderson um, wrote a paper about this specifically. Um, I don't know what year, but a few years back, um, studying uh, using NDT data to look at throttling. So um, that's oh, I'm in New York. Sorry, it's loud. Um, and uh, that's a good place also if you're interested in this topic to to start reading up. Okay, great. Well. Uh, I guess uh, I have one last question for you before yeah. uh, before we uh, we close this. Uh, it's you know basically if you have anything uh, that you would like to uh, you know request or make a, uh, you know bring the attention to of uh, the viewers of uh, of these videos, uh, as in the internet freedom community, people uh, that are following the internet measurement village, like what what, what, we, what would you, you know, tell them to get more involved with measurement lab, uh, how they can better support your work, and, you know, in general, anything that uh, you think, uh, you know, you would like to share to, to close this, uh, this session. Yeah, it's funny. I feel like there's like trumpets <laughs> for me and <laughs> the presentation, except it's sirens. Um, yeah, I would just say try, let's just like, like use our data, please, please, uh, you know, if you have a research question that's useful to whatever it is you're trying to do in the IF community, think about how NDT data can be useful for that and think about how MLab as a platform can be useful for that. And um, when and if and when, you know, you hit a, a thing that would be um, a feature ad or something that you need more of, um, please let us know. We're, we're really open to feedback and to be here as a resource. So just to say if, if MLab as is, is not um, meeting the needs of the IF community, let's talk about how, how that can change. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again, Lai, for taking the time uh, to join us today uh, for this presentation. Thank and, you. <laughs> and, and thank you. Also, thank you so much for uh, the work that you and all your colleagues at, are doing at the Measurement Lab uh, in, you know, collecting this amazing, uh, huge data set uh, that, you know, is made available as open data that is helping us uh, improve our understanding of how the internet works around the world. So really, thank you for that. Yeah. It's really important work. Thank you for saying thank you. <laughs> and thank you for putting this on. Yeah, this is great. Yay, Measurement Village. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to thank, uh, obviously, everybody who's been following us today on uh, the live stream, um, but also, uh, perhaps even more importantly, the people that are watching this uh, in the future. Um, you know, thanks for taking the time uh, to watch this. Um, I'll remind you that uh, we have uh, tomorrow another session uh, that is from Alessio Placitelli from uh, Mozilla, uh, and he'll be telling us all about how to detect outages with Mozilla telemetry. So, you know, be sure to join in for that uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Ciao. <laughs>